Hello guys, so um, today I'm going to be doing a video highlighting um, several um, solder, basically your standard 60-40 hobbyist type. So um, I was previously planning to do a shootout, but that proved to be almost impossible due to the different, um, due to every single brand. I mean, you have, you have all of those brands, um, Kester, AIM, Multicore, um, MG Chemicals. So I, so I decided to do a small experiment. So I have, um, so for the price that I'm paying, I was interested, were there really any differences? So um, I have what I currently use in my lab, which is a roll of decent quality. It's not high end by any means. Um, MG Chemicals 6040 rosin activated. So this stuff is around, um, I think I paid around $10 for a half pound roll. And I have some of the really high end stuff that Multicore sent me. They were the only ones that chose to respond. Um, Kester at first responded, but then wanted me to actually buy a whole box of, a box of one pound rolls. That, that was ridiculous. So I have Multicore um, 370. 6040 solder. This is what you'll get on DigiKey or um, I think Mauser sell the same kind. So for today's experiment, what I've done is I've taken a piece of um, strip strip board and I have put some of that nasty water soluble flux on it. That stuff is really quite nasty. You don't want to use that unless you unless you know what you're getting yourself into. So several regions are very heavily corroded, such as right down here. That part's bad, and then some parts up here are pretty bad as well. So um, we're just going to do some standard through-hole so through soldering with, a, um, with my little box of miscellaneous resistors that are burnt out or, or whatever. And, um, or I've salvaged them from other projects. And we can also do some surface mount. Granted, surface mount will be quite difficult due to the fact that um, due to the fact that the the multi core solder I requested for five core, so um, it was not so it's not the thinnest, the 0 0.025 inch, which I generally prefer for SMD. So why don't we start out with just a couple of resistors? and on this part of the very corroded board and um, I will do one with flux and one without so we can see the differences so let's uh, turn on our iron the iron I'm using in this scenario is a Heiko FX triple eight D and I will um, tin the tip with the, with the type of solder we will use before and I will clean it off with the little um, wire brass sponge after. All right, so let's just put so the first two resistors we're gonna do without flux and the flux I am using will be Kester 951 no clean flux it's basically just what I have on hand at the moment and there's no way in hell I'm gonna be using water soluble that stuff that stuff's terrible it chews through your copper traces and destroys your board so might be a little bit of a tight fit seems fine so um, at first we can actually do we can actually probably do so you can see the resistors in um, it might be fun if we just go ahead and do one for comparison with a standard board, which I also have right here. It's a little bit dirty, but we'll just find a spot that's nice and clean. All right, so the iron is up at temperature, and why don't we go ahead and do this first? Let's get our camera in a good position. All right, so first, I am just going to use no flux, um, MG chemicals, rosin activated. And let me 
me get my tight ass fume extractor out here. It's really just a computer fan that I modified to suck fumes up. It doesn't work too bad, actually. Alright, so um, the tip I have tinned with the solder. And now let's go ahead and try at this. Alright, there's the first joint. Um, let me get out a pair of cutters. My good pair, my um, Play-Dohs aren't with me right now. Thanks to John on the forum for donating those to me. Um, let's go ahead, second leg. I'm sorry I don't have a macro lens to solder under, but we can take a look at the quality afterwards. Alright, so um, from soldering I can tell I can tell you it's not easy actually due to the fact that um, the solder is not taking. It likes to ball up and you have to push it around and you see how it forms that tall little mound. Alright, so now this time we have the multi-core 60-40, uh, 370 flux. So first off, I'm just going to tin, tin my tip with it. And let's give it a go. My main problem with what I received is that it's um, really quite thick. So let's try it on here. Oops. Give me a second here. It's not, it's not exactly behaving the way I want it to right now. Alright, so we've got that there. Um, neither joint really produced an excellent result. Let me see if I can focus, uh, move, the, move the camera up and you can see it. Neither solder really produced that great of a result, but if I had to say which one was easier to solder with, I, I might actually have to say it's the multi-core due to the fact that um, I would believe the five cores of flux. This one is 2.2% flux. I believe the multi-core is 3% flux. And I think on the heavily oxidized boards, that makes a large difference. So now let's go ahead and try again with some flux. I'm just going to use a bottle of Kester 951. Um, I keep these in little needle bottles. And I, you can get them real cheap from eBay like 99 cents a bottle for the bottle and you buy the flux from whatever vendor you choose. I'm, so, I'm actually surprised the guy hasn't got caught for shipping that stuff yet. Apparently there are many restrictions on how, how you can ship it. Alright, so let's put that through. So this board is actually very heavily oxidized. So it's probably worse than some of the antique electronics you might want to repair, etc, etc. Alright, so, th so this is a stupid resistor with a twisted pin. So I'll just use this one. I'm sorry you can't see what's going on here, but it's not terribly exciting. It's me putting resistors through holes in the strip board. Damn it! Stupid thing. Alright, so this one's in now. Take a quick look at it. Oh, I think I put it in backwards. Oh, God. Alright. 
Is it cracked? Is it cracked? Yes, yes it is. Alright, so this is um put the resistor through. Let me focus the camera. There. So you can see it just fine. Um let's let's solder this one with the multi-core, uh, I'm sorry, with the MG chemicals with flux. So this is Kester 951. Let's put, you can never have too much flux, right? All right, so now that this is good, let's, um, let's proceed. Wow, that was much, much easier. Instant, and the joints look significantly nicer. There's no bridging, the flux, it stays where it needs to. It's perfect. All right, so let's give it a try again with the multi-core. Let's cut these stupid lugs off first. And after this, we can do surface mount. But here's the catch without flux. Surface mount might actually be a little bit difficult since the... What? It just popped. I think my rolly chair just ran over a bloody resistor. Oops. And the green lights you see are actually from the fan, from a little computer fan. Got for like free on Black Friday. I use that as a fume extractor now. Significantly. All right. So two drops of flux on each side. Let's take out the multi-core. And we'll take a look, see how this performs. All right, so um, we're done with that. So for with flux, I'd have to say they're pretty much identical. Um, I might even have to say that the MG Chemicals was easier to use due to the fact with it being thinner, but that's beside the point of this experiment. So I'd call it a draw for this one, but for the no flux heavily corroded, I would have to say that um, multi-core, five core is actually while it's a little bit thick, it's very good for um, that type of soldering. The flux is very powerful and it removes the oxidation quite nicely. So, we're done with this board. Now let's give surface mount a try. And um, I, I'm not going to do anything special, probably just some 0805. It's probably the easiest for me. Um, let's clean the desk off. I'm just using alcohol pads because I have a massive surplus of these stupid things. So, yeah. There we go. I went ahead and purchased these from China. They're not they're not too expensive. If you wanna if you're interested in practicing. You know what? Why don't we go try 0603? I have a massive excess of 0603 components, so I can give that a try. Surface mounts are really quite cheap, I mean, on DigiKey. I purchased 5,000 resistors for six bucks. So I have a roll of Rome resistors. All right, so um, here's the reel. Just cut some off. And um, I've always found DigiKey packaging really quite arbitrary. I mean, they'll put these capacitors in anti-static bags, but uh, not those. And they'll put some resistors in anti-static bags for whatever reason. So, all right. So let's um, let's start. Let's get my pair of tweezers here. Oh, 
tidy then. All right. So, um, yeah, 0603 really isn't all that hard. I, I haven't practiced much on it, so you know, I'll just pour them out on the table. Get rid of that. All right, so don't flip over. If all else fails, just get another one. All right, so um, same as last time, two with flux, two without. Let's go for the without now. Let's tin, tin the tip and then clean it off. All right, so let's tack one leg down. Um, I typically like to hold it down. And then just do that and one leg is down. And then you can just solder the other the other leg quite easily. Alright, so I think I put a little bit too much solder on this side, and the other side seems fine, so I can get out a jeweler's loop and we can take a look at it. Try and get it on camera. Not sure how this is going to work. All right, there. So I'm not sure if you can see it clearly or not. Yeah, yeah. Give me a second. I, I don't think you can see it very clearly, but um, from 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 my point of view, it it looks like a decent joint think it would have been significantly better with flux. So let's go ahead and try with the multi-core now. Um, this is, as I've repeated many times, very thick solder. So we're probably going to have to change the way we do things here. All right. So I'm going to use Dave's technique and then um, put some solder on the pad first. That should be plenty. And then we can and then we can go ahead and solder this. I think the card and the camera is about to run out of memory, so yeah, I let's hope that doesn't happen. Let me take a quick look. No, I no, we're fine. Alright. So Take one of these little suckers. All right, put it on. That's good. Just get a little bit. You know, I don't even think we have to get more solder. I think if we just put it on this side, it should be fine. No, no, it won't. There we go. So it produces a pretty decent joint actually. If you can work with the huge amount of self-control needed. Um, now let's give it a go with flux. It should be significantly easier. So, and yeah, I'm probably just gonna use the tacking it down method. So make sure you can see it. All right, those pins right there. All righty.
Okay. So that should be enough solder, and then we'll take, we'll go ahead and I actually almost never solder with magnification. Something interesting. I, I don't have a microscope and I've never gotten used to doing that. I'm sure I could get used to it with a mantis though. Huh. Stupid little bugger. Put it down. Good. Just give it another, give it some more flux. I know uh, many people prefer to use the flux pens, but I found that the needle bottle is probably cheaper and it works and it works fine. All right, so that's, um, let's go ahead and try. Do it with this one. Just using multi core. So basically, from what I've seen so far, I would think that if you're working with a lot of really old electronics that needs to be restored, etc., I would be thinking that you might want to pay some more and get the powerful flux, the powerful and high large amount of flux in the multi core. Rather, if you're just soldering kits all day, etc., etc you would probably be fine with the cheaper MG chemicals or whatever. Um, uh-oh, uh-oh. Where did it go? Okay, it's right there. Don't worry about it now. Damn it. All right, give me a second here. All right, get the iron. I'm, I'm actually quite glad I haven't made any stupid mistakes today yet. All right, so that's down. And um, let's give it flux. All right, we're good there. Good there. So um, I think we can wrap this up. Basically, my impressions are that soldering with the multi-core on a heavily corroded surface without flux, there is an advantage. However, I would think that if you're just doing regular soldering every day, you might as well just go with the cheaper MG chemicals. Um, so there's really not much of a quantifiable difference so I'm not sure how this would pan out with other industry standards like the Kester 44 or some of the Indian Corporation stuff. So yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.